Pierre Horsfall many years ago was designated or required to eliminate the poverty in Jersey. Mm. He never did, of course, and never did. It's the poverty in the world, I think it was the United Nations Initiative. A hopeless task, but it's still a hopeless task. What is that? Well, let's not say it's a hopeless task. I think it's always a, a really important thing to aim for, because who, who wants to see anybody who's placed in that situation of being homeless? It's something that we do need to understand more if we're going to tackle it properly in Jersey, because still to this day, we don't know exactly how many people do face homelessness. And we know that the shelter are now housing up to 100 people a night, which is quite a staggering piece of information. Also Sanctuary Trust, of which I declare an interest, I'm a trustee, that um, has a constant flow of men using their facilities men, as well, it? always men, uh, because it is a de dedicated resource and facility for men who are facing homelessness. Um, there are other organisations who work in the sphere for women, but there is potential and potentially an argument to assist women also. Um, but what we don't know is how many people are on the verge of homelessness, how many people are sofa surfing um, and, and going from one place to another. When you look at the system itself, the regulations, it encourages homelessness. For example, we have a housing regulation which qualified non mm. So immediately a very large number of people are not allowed to occupy public yep. So if they become ill or whatever happens to them, then they're doubly difficult situation. Well, we've had a very interesting debate today. Unfortunately, it was a rather short debate um, about diversity and inclusion in our society, and homelessness and poverty feeds into that. And it was a great disappointment for me that the Council of Ministers sought to amend the corporate services proposition that um, diversity and inclusion should actually be a priority of the uh, strategic plan or the common strategic policy, as they're now calling it. And they downgraded it to being a common theme. The Chief Minister in his speech told us that he wanted his priorities to be things that were important to every islander and I found that quite a staggering thing to say actually because what is more important than celebrating diversity and inclusion and ensuring that we have a socially cohesive island. So okay it's a step forward that we've got it as a common theme but we really should have gone further and had that as a priority. It's true, but we've got things like social housing where well, you have to have a minimum age of about 50 even to be allowed to occupy it. And so many young people have extraordinary problems getting out, single young people especially, but they're not allowed to. A single young person has got a treble whammy because the, the Social Security won't pay them benefits until they're after 25. They've got to live at home. Hmm. Well, All the those sort of factors make people homeless. They contribute to making homelessness. They, I don't think anyone would... Um, would disagree with you. Um, of course the rules have been set in a way to manage availability of resource and um, homes and accommodation is something that is a scarce resource in the island and so difficult decisions have had to be made in the past and I guess will always continue to be made because you have to manage the resource available with the um, need. I'm and really surprised that I disagree with you quite fundamentally. The attitude towards providing housing, as there's what they call green land, sacred green land, and I don't think it's justified. I don't think that the case has been made yet that so called calling land green is a prior hmm. purpose. I don't think it's justified. I'm a great lover of our environment and I want to protect our environment in Jersey but at the elections I made a very big point in just that area actually uh, because I was extremely frustrated by the lack of desire to um, consider building 64 affordable homes on a small greenfield well, site in St Peter's. the island plan I went to the meeting there was a very vociferous group from St Peter's oh, we don't want social housing in our parish it was quite frightening. That was previously with Claude de Charme, I think. Yes, yes, I remember that also. And we we do have to make some difficult decisions sometimes, but that, that field is 0.003% of the total agricultural land farmed at the moment in the island. A small sliver of farming land, and it would make very little difference or impact to the environment if it were to be um, turned to affordable housing use, which is...
is absolutely, in my mind, what needs to be done. And it should be a model for other parishes to follow. I know that, sorry to interrupt you, Mike, but I do know that St. Wands are keen as well. They have exactly the same problem and they want to resolve it and provide affordable homes and accommodation for people. You know, um, in past generations, fields in St. Peter and around the island were turned over to homes that were um, made available through the state's loan scheme, which was much appreciated. But many of those people who bought them back in the 70s still live in those homes because they love them. They're great communities and, and people enjoy the experience of living there. But sadly, it means that the stock isn't turned over and, and, um, and made available to the next generation. So we do need to focus on... Well, there was a restriction on the price of farmland, about £200 of OG or £300 of OG. That was cancelled, one of the wisest things they ever did, I thought, to prevent inflation. If it was zoned for housing, that was the maximum price you could pay for that land. Mm. I thought that was brilliant. It didn't last me this. £11 million profit made on the building this week at the sale of. Mm. Why can't this be put to homelessness? £11 million? Pounds? That would solve the problem once and for all, wouldn't it? Well, that money um, had been allocated already to the car park project, but um, SOJDC are using the successes that they have been having recently to positive effect, and they assure me that £1 million of that money, that um, not, not that particular money, but £1 million of their profits is going to be channelled towards St Helier um, for the priorities and the decision making um, to sit with the uh, regeneration of St Helier group and then the next year there will be another million pounds also so really it will be a two million pound injection for St Helier to prioritise. Are the other parishes doing their bit on homelessness? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, at Sanctuary Trust, we're really well supported in both St. Brellard and St. Peter with parishioners um, who, who appreciate the, the men who live in their community and they welcome them. It's always good to see you, but I don't want to see you here again next year. Is there any possibility that we won't be doing this next year? Sadly, um, I think that would be unrealistic in the space of a year. However much we all collectively want to tackle homelessness. However, we, we can all do our bit and champion the cause to ensure that we make the right decisions that help to eradicate it. You don't think this has become just a ceremony almost to perpetuate homelessness in a way? It's become sort of traditional. We have oh. this bit like Poppy Day, isn't it? No, I think it's important that people come together as a community and work on different projects that mean a lot to them. And I think the number of people who come along and support this year on year is a great symbol of uh, the desire to do good and to serve our community and con con to be thankful for what we have, but also to contribute and assist those who, who don't, don't enjoy the same benefits. I will stop there. How's that? Thank you. It's cool now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.